Good evening. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Amy Burkett. School-aged children visit the emergency room 2.4 million times in a year, and 6% of those visits happen because of concussions. The top five sports for this injury include football, soccer, bicycling, basketball, and playground activities. Many school systems, including Charlotte-Mecklenburg, have concussion protocols these days to help students heal from their brain injury. But some have suffered more than one concussion, and recovery can get complicated. There's a way to treat concussions that you may not have heard about before. Carolina Impact's Jason Terzes explains. Lloyd with Morgan streaking. She's chipping the goalkeeper! The United States victory over Japan in the 2015 Women's World Cup Final was the most watched soccer event in the history of American television, with over 25 million people tuning in. The popularity of star players like Alex Morgan and Carly Lloyd have led to a new generation of girls taking up the sport. But the more girls who play, unfortunately also means the more who also get hurt. The total number of reported concussions has doubled in the last decade, with up to 10% of all players suffering at least one. The most common cause? Colliding with another player. And out of nowhere came this kid. Like we collided and I fell back and like hit this side of my face on the concrete. Hannah Johnson's concussion didn't happen on the soccer field. It happened on the school playground when she was just eight, and it kept her away from the sport she loves. Passed out, her vision got really blurry, she actually couldn't see for a few seconds. MRIs and CAT scans came back normal, but with a nasty black eye, Hannah rested at home for two weeks. No school, no reading, no TV. Whenever we would go outside, I'd have to put on a pair of sunglasses, which is like embarrassing. And then the summer came and she had, you know, a good couple months off from school and all of that and just recovered very normally. But just nine months later, it happened again, this time on a merry-go-round. And she couldn't reach the floor to stop herself. And so she was spinning so hard and so fast that the rotational spinning caused her concussion-like <laughs> symptoms to return. But it didn't really stop over time. Like, if I would do certain things, I would feel it again. And I knew that wasn't normal. Dizziness, uh, headaches, sensitivity to light, you know, all the things that we had experienced already. Months went by, but Hannah would still occasionally feel foggy, lightheaded, and had some difficulty sleeping. After seeing multiple doctors and physicians and physical therapists, I mean, we went, you name it. Hannah got the news from doctors she was dreading, no soccer, not for a full year. And I remember every time they'd tell me like, you can't play soccer, and I'd walk out of there crying because I just wanted to play again. And when we had to take that away from her, it sort of burned out a little spark in her, and that broke me. Cindy Johnson desperately wanted to help her daughter, but didn't know how. Nobody could help us on the mainstream path of physicians and, and therapists. Finally came the break they were hoping for. A friend told Cindy about the Carolinas Biofeedback Clinic. We're sort of in between what the classic psychological approach is and what the classic medical approach is. They very quickly put my mind at ease that they felt like what they could do for her would help her. I remember walking into it and just being like, how is this going to help me? Like, is this just another doctor that's going to tell me I can't do anything? First up, a full assessment of Hannah's overall health. So we don't just talk about the presenting symptoms that they're coming with at that moment, but we look at their entire health history and the way that their brain and their nervous system has handled stress. And they did, then we develop an individualized neurofeedback plan for that client. Treatment started that day as Hannah was hooked up to various electrodes that measure brain waves. I just had to close my eyes. It was relaxing and then after like a few sessions, I could already notice that like I was feeling better. So what exactly is biofeedback? Well, without getting too technical, it's the process of using electrical sensors to measure physiological activity, such as brain waves, heart function, muscle activity, breathing, and skin temperature, and then using that information in conjunction with changes in thinking, emotions, and behavior to support desired changes. Biofeedback promotes relaxation. It's been found effective in a number of issues, including migraines, sleep issues, and attention deficit disorder. Some people use one thing, um, others may use two, three, four, five of our techniques. Uh, it just depends what we're, what we're kind of going after. Melanie Berry has her master's degree in psychology and is board certified in biofeedback. She owns and operates the Carolinas Biofeedback Clinic. She helped develop a plan for Hannah, which included 20 sessions over several months. After a while, I started to enjoy it because I would just go in and it would be like relaxing and I would just sit there. It made her feel better. She would leave feeling better than when she went in. Over time, Hannah's symptoms became less frequent and wouldn't last as long until the point where they finally went away. And now I can do everything I want, like whenever I want, which is really great to not have to stress about it all the time. 
Now in eighth grade, Hannah is in her third full soccer season since returning and feeling better than ever. She wears a concussion headband just to be on the safe side. She is at the top of her game, both socially, academically, um, athletically. She is exactly who she wants to be right now. And I didn't know for a period of about six months to a year if I'd ever see that again. To say that I'm over the moon and elated would be an understatement. Although growing in popularity, biofeedback isn't considered a mainstream medical practice. Critics question how it compares with more conventional methods, but for Hannah, the results speak for themselves. For Carolina Impact, I'm Jason Terzis reporting. Thanks so much, Jason. If you want to explore biofeedback, you need to know it's often not covered by insurance. Talk to your doctor first and do your research on both the biofeedback treatment options as well as the cost. Well, getting